We first became involved with UBC because as we started having the urban honey, uh, we had uh, concerns whether or not the honey would be polluted. Because we were in the downtown east side, people were skeptical that we could make honey in the, the poorest part of town. We wanted to really have this assurance that the honey was safe to eat. We didn't have the money to, to do this kind of testing, it's quite expensive. And just through a mutual friend introduced me to Dominique at UBC and I asked if she would help us. She, I knew she had this lab and Dominique said absolutely she would be interested in helping. And then it started just four years of getting in data from the bees. UBC started this very interesting initiative, which is the Excellence Research Cluster, allowing researchers from different disciplines to start projects together, collaborate, and basically push the boundaries further than what they would do if they were stuck in their lab. So we created the Beehive Cluster. I had no idea where we would end up, where we started analyzing the high for humanity honey. One question at the beginning was, would the trace metals in bees potentially explain why you have all these hives dying? So we analyzed metal concentration, cadmium, vanadium, lead, nickel, cobalt. But also, we analyzed the lead isotopic composition. It's the fingerprint of the source of the metal in the honey. It's very important to document what the various human activities have contributed to the environment. Because then we have numbers we can compare to. We can see how in 10 years, for instance, the levels have changed in the environment. The levels that we measure actually are very, very low in Vancouver. They're lower than in most of the world. As the city grows, as there is more boat traffic, it's important to have a record of where we are now. And again, if you think about boats, container boats, and potentially the doubling of the pipelines, if that ever happens, we'll be able to see immediately the impact of all this tanker traffic. When bees forage, not only are they actively collecting pollen and nectar, they're also passively collecting particulates. They're flying through the air, they're landing on surfaces, they're landing on the soil, they're drinking water, and all the while they're passively picking up particulates. In the city, you have a number of potential sources of heavy metals. Buildings and civil structures are always weathering. They're rusting fuel emissions from a large port, a railway yard, also stop and go traffic. Because the bees interact with all of these different environmental domains, they bring it back to the hive, incorporate it into their honey, and the honey therefore gives us this very handy snapshot of the environment immediately surrounding the hive. By doing this monitoring now, here in this very clean city like Vancouver, we have a very useful current baseline against which we can compare changes in the local environment over the next few decades. The bees at the Fairmont waterfront have been here since 2008. We have a 2,400 square foot rooftop garden. We added honeybees in 2008. But then we thought, you know what? Honeybees are fantastic, but they're not indigenous to North America and they are an agricultural crop. And we have over 400 species of indigenous bees um, who are also struggling with loss of habitat and many of the same issues that honeybees are having. And so we took that to Julia and Sarah at Highs for Humanity and we said, what can we do for the solitary bees? And they said, let's, let's build a pollinator corridor across the downtown east side. So we built the pollinator hotel Hotel. We call it our B&B. &B. Our b, b is a little bit of a story of the city. We have about a thousand guests go through our summer bee tours each year. One thing I love about being at this hotel and working the bees here is that almost every time I'm working their bees, four or five guests come down and I am able to talk to them about the bees, show them the pollinating hotel, and you just never know. It's like spreading the seeds out on the field. You never know when those are going to come um, to fruit and it gives me ever-growing hope 
that people do care about the environment we live in.